Yo, 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 what is up, y'all? It's Cone back here again tonight with another episode of After the Buzzer, the show where I recap the NBA games from the night. We need to talk about game one of the NBA Finals, which just wrapped up. It wrapped up, and I immediately came in here to start recording because it was insane. The first half, the two teams combined for the most threes in a half in uh, NBA Finals history. Steph Curry had 21 points in the first half. Al Horford and Derek White went absolutely ballistic, both drilling three after three after three. Jason Tatum was really, really bad. Jalen Brown stepped it up huge in the fourth quarter, and the Celtics won after being down 14 coming into the quarter, 14 or 12, one of those two, coming into the fourth quarter. They outscored the Warriors 40 to 16, outscored them by 24 points in the fourth quarter to win this game. If I told you that Jason Tatum scored 12 points, given he did have 13 assists, so shout to Tatum for that, but shot like 20% from the field, you never would have thought the Celtics would have won this game. And as someone who picked the Celtics to win this series, going into it, I thought to myself, Tatum's gotta be Tatum. If Tatum is struggling, the Celtics aren't going to last long in this series. But no, Tatum was, he struggled, but then Al Horford became the best big man since Shaq, which maybe he already was. Uh, Derek White continues to look like one of the most underrated, maybe even the best trade deadline acquisition out of all of them with the way that he's played over the course of this finals run. Jalen Brown started turning up in the fourth quarter, started off with 10 points on perfect shooting, ended up with 24, seven and five. Peyton Pritchard hit a few threes. Marcus Smart was chucking early and drilling threes. He ended up with 18, five and four. And it was incredible. The way that the Celtics went from the first like two quarters, it was super competitive. Uh, it did still feel like the Warriors really should be up by a lot more than they were. I think they were up five or six at halftime. So it felt like the Warriors maybe should be up a bit more because the Celtics were turning the ball over a lot. The Warriors were getting a lot of wide open looks, but the Celtics kind of just stayed in it. They did just enough to stay in it. And then of course, in the third quarter, the way the Warriors always do, the three started raining in. Steph Curry continued to go off. Klay Thompson started turning it up a lot. Wiggins, Otto Porter Jr. went nuts in this one in the third quarter. And it kind of started to feel like the house was falling down on the Celtics. It felt like the Warriors were just, you know, they've been here, they've done this before, they were starting to hit their shots, get into their offense and their rhythm, and then partway through the third quarter, the Celtics kind of found a defensive rhythm a little bit, and heading into the fourth, it was like, oh, the Celtics have a little bit of momentum, but they're down 12, and the Warriors right now kind of look unstoppable. Then Steph sat for a bit, and they started to hit some threes. Uh, they started to hit some more threes. Steph comes back in, doesn't matter. Celtics started the fourth quarter 7 of 7 from 3. It was unreal. All of a sudden, I look down, I look up. Al Horford's got six threes on the game, which is the most by any player in their finals debut in NBA history. Al Horford, the guy who had played the most playoff games without a finals appearance up until tonight. And here he is, Al Horford, going off. He was absolutely incredible. If they gave the finals MVP out, like say this was just whoever wins this game wins the finals, Horford would right now be your finals MVP. The way that he played, the way that he played defensively, offensively. And there were a lot of people who I saw on Twitter and on like various platforms saying that Horford was going to get played off the court, that Horford couldn't play in this matchup, that he just really didn't have the foot speed to keep up. That was not true. And that was something I really felt was off because Horford's been a huge part of this Celtics run partially because even though he's bigger, he's done a great job of moving his feet despite his old age. He's a great defensive presence and he spaces the floor in the exact way the Celtics need him to. He was taking so many catch and shoot threes. He was six of eight from three before the end of the game where he had uh, missed another one. He was absolutely on fire. There was nothing they could do to stop him. He was dominating. He was getting really physical inside. And ultimately, it kind of felt like that was what the Celtics really did well that ended up causing this comeback, their physicality. Something I said is that the Celtics have to be physical. To beat this Golden State Warriors team, you've got to be physical with them. You've got to wear them down. You've got to really force them to really take tough shots, which they did not do at all in the first half. For some reason, they started off playing this like really weird drop 
drop coverage on Steph Curry. Like Robert, there's two screenshots on Twitter of Robert Williams and Al Horford, like 10 feet away from Steph Curry on threes that he drilled early on. They were just completely sagging off when he came around the screen and he was just drilling those threes, making the Celtics pay. They did fix the defense later, but early on they were playing this weird defense. But by the end of the game, they locked in a lot. It felt like they kind of found their footing. They were getting a lot of good steals, a lot of pokeaways, uh, forcing the Warriors to actually take some really tough shots and just forcing a lot of turnovers, which is what they've got to do. They've got to be physical. And by the end of the game, the Warriors looked really worn out. The Celtics started to hit some shots and the Warriors went back into their offense on the other end and they just weren't getting the same quality of looks, both because Boston started to lock down a lot more, but it felt like the Celtics kind of started to get the game on their pace. They started to really put the Warriors in some uncomfortable positions when in the first half they're getting all these wide open looks and I think it just kind of rattled them a little bit they were starting to miss some looks that they made earlier on Steph Curry kind of tweaked his ankle on a pump fake at one point he seemed to be fine at the end of the game so I don't think he'll miss time or anything like that but the Celtics did such a good job of locking in and it was really funny because it's like a microcosm of their whole season where they started off pretty shaky, and then by the end, they finished it out, catch fire, and here they are, up 1-0 in the NBA Finals. And it should be very wor worrying for the Golden State Warriors, because this is a game where Tatum was bad. Like, Tatum was really, really bad, and I know a lot of people on Twitter are saying stuff like, uh... Al Horford won't shoot this well again. Derek White probably won't shoot this well again, which you're probably right. Horford's not going to score 26 again, I doubt. Derek White's not probably not going to score 21 again. But even still, when Tatum, the star player of the team, is struggling the way he is, and the Warriors got a lot of great play out of role players, Wiggins with 20. Steph had 34, 5, and 5. Uh, Jordan Poole, he really struggled. We'll talk about him in a second. Otto Porter, 12 points. Igudala was out there hooping in 12 minutes. He had 7 points and 3 boards, uh, or 3 assists. Like, they were getting some pretty good play. And when you've got Tatum struggling the way that he does in this game, you've got to win this one. And to blow a lead like that on your home court, it's got to be deflating. I don't think the Warriors are going to really take much mind to it, but it's got to be a little concerning that you held Jason Tatum. The, probably their game plan was make the other people beat us instead of Jason Tatum. And that's exactly what they did. They really honed in on Tatum. They were playing great defense on him all game, but Tatum and part of his evolution as a player has been him growing as a playmate. Maker. Putting up double digit assists in this one is a huge reason as to why they won because Tatum, he continued to shoot. He still took open shots. It's not like he was like d deferring all the time, but he was being a lot more selective towards the end of the game. He realized it wasn't his night and he was dishing out dimes. He was really setting up the other players and you're not going to get a game like this where Tatum struggles this much. You may get some other games where he struggles to score efficiently, but you're not going to get like a 20% shooting night from Tatum again. It's it's not going to happen. And so if Tatum gets back to his normal self, even if Derek White now Horford aren't quite, you know, scoring 25 plus points, it's still concerning because if Tatum scores 30 and they even put up like double digits, how are you going to respond? You've got to step up defensively. They've got to figure out how to better operate and guard the three point line specifically. Though Celtics did a great job also of targeting a lot of mismatches. Uh, they continue to get guys going downhill against smaller defenders and that forced them to make a lot of switches. Marcus Smart and Jalen Brown specifically did a great job of attacking mismatches. Uh, Jason Tatum did a good job of attacking as well but what he would do is instead of score because he didn't do a lot of that tonight, he did a great job like I said of when he would get downhill kicking to the open shooter they would either shoot the ball and make a three most of the time with the way that they shot tonight or they would defer and find the extra pass which the Celtics did a great job of finding the open man tonight and they would just drill a three and the Warriors need to do a better job of making those rotations not leaving guys wide open and if you're going to commit to Tatum the way that you're going to in tonight's game, you've got to do a better job of making rotations, communicating, and guarding the three-point line because they were just getting some really nice looks. I mean, they were still hitting some like really contested threes, but a lot of them were just wide open, which the Warriors were getting in the first half. The Celtics, by the end of the game, were getting them as well, which once again, I think just speaks to how tired the Warriors got. Celtics take game one. Um... Jordan Poole, he's got to be better. Uh, I actually today was in a Twitter space on the Enjoy Basketball Twitter account. If you don't follow it, go follow that Twitter account. Uh, we do spaces every Thursdays, but... <clears throat> 
on that space, someone came up and asked the question, who is the most important player, like role player, in your opinion, in this series? And for me, it was Jordan Poole. Because Steph Curry is going to be Steph Curry. He's always done this. Earlier today, I was in a Twitter space and someone asked me, who's the most important role player in this series to you? And my answer was Jordan Poole. To me, Jordan Poole really is the X factor of this series. He's a guy that on some nights can give you 20, 25, 30 points on some occasions. And tonight with him only scoring nine and being that bad, it clearly hurt the Warriors offense. Towards the end of the game, Steph had done so much carrying that he seemed to wear down a little bit. If you've got a guy like Jordan Poole who is playing really well, it just adds so many more dimensions to this Warriors offense. Cause you've already got a double team Steph half the time. You've got to worry about Clay running off of dribble handoffs and screens. You've got to worry about Wiggins, Otto Porter Jr. But if you've got a guy like Jordan Poole who can really create his own shot, probably the second best on that team, then you're really in trouble if you're the Boston Celtics. And I think the lack of Poole scoring ultimately hurt them a lot more than might, maybe some people realize because you they really didn't have to pay that much attention to him. He wasn't that aggressive and when he was, he just wasn't scoring the ball. He's got to be better. He's a guy that I really think if the Warriors want to come back, bounce back and take game two, they're going to need a pretty good game from him. They need to run some, uh, some actions to get him some good looks, get him some rhythm buckets, just get him shooting the ball, see it go in the basket. And if Jordan Poole steps up in a big way, the Warriors can definitely bounce back. So those are my thoughts on this game. Uh, the series is far from over, but I do think this is a great sign for Boston Celtics fans. If you are one uh, Warriors fans, there's still a good shot. Y'all win this thing, but I would be a little worried. Uh, so those are my takes. Let me know what your takeaways were from game one of the NBA finals in the comment section below. Also make sure to leave a like and subscribe if you did enjoy. I'd love to hear what you all have to say as well. Um, but yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, if you made it to this point in the video, drop an Al Horford finals MVP in the comment section below to let me know you made it to the end. But for right now, I appreciate y'all watching. I'll see y'all later. Real one, say it back.